Hello there, everyone. I'm very excited to bring this recipe to you today. It has been several months in the making with a lot of experimentation and failures along the way, but I can finally present to you a fairly quick and easy way to make a chocolate that is legal for people on the specific carbohydrates diet. I'm pretty sure that most of you watching this are already on the SCD, but just for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, the specific carbohydrates diet is a very precise and restrictive grain-free diet plan designed to help people with Crohn's, colitis, and other gastrointestinal issues. It allows for some carbs, but bans others based on how hard they are to digest. It allows things like fresh fruit, most vegetables, meat without additives, and homemade yogurt. But no starches, grains, or processed or canned foods. And most importantly for this recipe, no chocolate. Well, something had to be done. Many of you were very excited when my wife posted pictures of her Valentine's gift this year, and you wanted to know how I did it. Well, I developed this recipe for her. I worked out the kinks and I gave her a box of chocolates and a bouquet of chocolate covered strawberries that she could actually eat. Now it's time to show you what I've learned. I recommend you watch the entire video before you attempt making this chocolate. It's more than just combining ingredients. There's a very important method to it, so it all comes out right. Um, it's, it is an easy recipe, but it's also easy to mess it up, so well, you'll see what I mean. This recipe uses four ingredients, two of which you probably already have if you're on the SCD. The other two are a little less common, but they're not too hard to obtain. I'll explain as we go. The first ingredient is cocoa butter. This is what's going to give the chocolate its texture and smell, just like it does for real chocolate. This is available at many grocery stores and online. It's not hard to find. You want the cold pressed cacao butter, not the heat treated cocoa stuff. There is a difference. Uh, it's in their melting points uh, and that is important. If you're on the SCD, you probably are, are already using this to make those peanut butter cups that have been the closest thing to chocolate you've had up until now. So you are going to measure around 30 grams of the cocoa butter, and you're going to place it in a small metal bowl. Metal because we need it to conduct heat well. Small because the recipe works best in small batches. You can double this recipe and it will still probably come out right. But if you try to make a really large amount at once, you're gonna have a hard time getting it to blend together. Trust me, stick with smaller batches. Once you've done this a few times, it's pretty quick and easy anyway, and making multiple small batches won't be a problem. The reason for small batches is because the second ingredient is SCD legal date syrup. This will give the chocolate its color and sweetness, but the rub is it won't blend with the cocoa butter. The two are like oil and water, and it took me months to figure out how to make them work together. This is available online at Welby's. If you're on the SCD, you should be familiar with Welby's. They are a wonderful source for SCD-friendly foods. I cannot recommend them enough. So, we are going to add 30 grams of date syrup to the bowl. Say this isn't so hard. We just got two ingredients. No problem. Now, the next ingredient is food grade paraffin wax. This is also found at many grocery stores and you can get it online pretty easily. It's not expensive and you don't need a lot of it. This bag is probably all it'll ever need. I understand that wax may seem like a strange thing to add to food, but it's, it's actually a common staple in chocolate making and it's the same stuff used on those hard cheeses that the SCD allows you to eat. Yeah, you're already eating this stuff as part of the SCD. You also only are going to use a single level, quarter teaspoon of this stuff. It's not like you're snacking on a candle. It's a very small amount. But it is important because what it is going to do is hold the syrup and cocoa butter together for you. The last is an optional ingredient and it is kind of weird, but it's doing the job of flavoring the chocolate the way cocoa powder does. This is Bitrex and it's literally the most bitter thing on the planet. 
I'm not joking. This is 10 grams and it cost me $12, which I understand doesn't sound very cost effective, but this 12 bucks worth is all you're ever gonna need because of how potent it is. Supposedly, if you place a thimble full of this stuff in a swimming pool, you can still taste it. In fact, I can sometimes taste it just from opening the bag. Its chemical name is denatonium benzoate, and its strong bitter taste is used to keep children from drinking poisonous things. You can find this stuff online, on, on eBay, easy enough, but you should know that it did take a very long time for it to ship to me. It's an additive purely for flavor. And we are going to take a cup of warm water and we are going to add a tiny pinch of it to the water. It does not take much at all. Like, like that, that, that's it. That's all I'm using, just that, that tiny amount. And I'm gonna mix that well with the warm water. Oh, oh, whoa. Oh. Yep, I can taste it. I can taste it already. It, that bit of powder got in the air and I can taste this stuff. This is potent. But don't worry, we're diluting it. That's kind of the point. So just blend it well with your warm water. It should dissolve easy enough. So yeah, I'm even gonna just take a little taste here. And Oh, yep, yep, that is bitter, all right. Yep, it's very similar to uh, eating unsweetened cocoa powder. It's not pleasant on its own. But we're gonna do is we're gonna take that quarter teaspoon and I'm going to add that to our mixture. And if you want a darker chocolate flavor, you can add, you know, two or three of them. I'm gonna, I think I'll go two this time. If you plan on making more chocolate soon, uh, you can keep this water in a sealed container to use later. This little cup of bitter water is gonna last you a very long time. That's it for the ingredients. Now we just need to melt this over some boiling water. This is important. Do not do this over direct heat on a stove. This double boiler method will make sure that the cocoa butter will harden back into its proper chocolate texture when it cools. Any higher temperatures will make your chocolate soft and gooey. It'll be a mess that won't even firm up in the freezer. It won't harden into the texture that we expect from chocolate. Trust me, I've been working on this for a long time. It's very easy to wreck your chocolate by heating it up too fast. This will take four or five minutes and you will want to stir it a little to help it along. Get a small whisk. This is important. A spoon isn't gonna do the job. Well, okay, right now while it's melting, a spoon is probably fine. But in the next step, you're gonna have to really mix this stuff up into a smooth concoction. So a small hand whisk is a must. Also, this is not going to work in a blender or with a mixer. I'll explain why as we go. Now that it's all melted, we remove the little metal bowl from the heat and place it in another bowl with cold tap water. Do not use ice water. Ice water will cool the chocolate too quickly. This recipe is a game of gentle temperatures. We need to blend this mix very well as it cools. We do this by hand for control, but also because a blender or a mixer will release heat too fast, and you'll wind up with chunks of unblended wax and cocoa butter in your chocolate. This only takes four or five minutes with this setup that I have here, so just mix it well and keep an eye on it. Depending on the bowls you're using, your water might get too warm from the heat of the metal bowl, and uh, you may have to get some new cold water partway through your cooling process. Still, do not use ice water, just cold tap water. I even used water from my fridge one time and that was too cold. And my chocolate just did not turn out right. Remember, gentle temperatures. What is going to happen is that the wax will harden before the cocoa butter. You want it to harden when it's well incorporated, so you need to be mixing it thoroughly as the wax hardens. You will see it start to form a shine on the surface and the whole thing will begin to thicken. This is the wax holding the cocoa butter and date syrup together in a pourable form. Now, I successfully made some chocolate before I discovered the trick with the wax, so it is possible to do this without the wax in the recipe, but it means mixing the cocoa butter and the date syrup until the cocoa butter just starts to harden. 
This gives you a very short window of time to use it before it gets solid, and finding that time is difficult and will usually end with a gritty chocolate that isn't well mixed. You will see unmixed cocoa butter at the surface of your chocolate, and you'll get beads of date syrup sweating out of it. it it's not great. The wax fixes all of these problems and even provides the chocolate with a nice shine and a smooth texture. When I figured this out, it was a real game changer. And it's what makes this recipe something everyone can accomplish with just a little instruction. No wax, and you're going to have to try this over and over again until you get the timing exactly right. When your mix is syrupy and thickening, you can pour it into your mold or dip your strawberries or bananas in it or whatever you plan on doing with it before it hardens completely. But if it does harden before you're ready, you can reheat it in boiling water again and re-blend the mix. As long as you've been gentle with the temperatures, it will still set into a smooth chocolate. Just be sure to mix it really well. Once you've poured your mix into the mold, put it in the freezer for about 30 minutes to set. And once it's set, you will have a lovely chocolatey treat with a color and texture that really sells the illusion of chocolate. Now, the flavor is close, but it's not a perfect replacement for chocolate. The date syrup doesn't exactly match cocoa. It does a decent job. It's sweet, the Bitrix helps make it more like chocolate, and the final product does taste good but it's not perfectly chocolate. So to give it a little more help, I recommend using this in treats where the chocolate isn't necessarily the star of the show. Coating strawberries or bananas works very well, and I also had success dipping almonds and cashews in it. Also, since this mix it separates when it's heated, it's not good for like fondues or chocolate fountains. And though I haven't used it to make chips yet, I would not recommend making chocolate chip cookies with this. The chips will most likely just liquefy and split and make a mess in the oven. If you want to try making this chocolate without the wax, here's some samples of what you are likely to end up with until you get it just right. So you can see uh, the graininess of it here. There are, and uh, some of these will have beads of date syrup sweating out of them. Also, if you don't blend it well enough, you might get this. You, you can see the way the cocoa butter and the date syrup have, uh, they haven't blended together right. They're, they, they're separated when it cooled. But um, oh, well, this one here is a sample that uh, it came out just right. I mean, this, this has no wax in it. I just managed to get the blending right. Um, so it is possible, it's just not easy. Here's a comparison here. So, and you can see, you even got a little bit better of a shine with the wax in there. And this was so much easier than this one. I say stick with the wax. It's gonna save you a lot of headache. I hope I've made this process clear, but if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I am willing to brave YouTube comments to help you all out. I'm also curious to know how this recipe works out for you. I worked very hard in figuring out this for my wife, and then I spent a lot of time figuring out how to make a video for you all. Sorry it took so long to make, but like this recipe, I've worked out the kinks, and I have some more SED recipes that I'd like to make videos about. I've spent the last year learning how to cook within my wife's new requirements, and I've come up with some treats that she really loves. I've developed my own recipes for ice cream and cheesecake. Um, uh, I'm excited to show those to you. Also, if there are some foods that are missing in your life because the SCD won't let you have them, well, maybe I can figure something out for you. I mean, that's what got me started here. So, wishing you all the best. Uh, I hope to hear from you all. Good luck.